Jesus' name we pray. Let's go before the Lord and ask him to drop his word that changes life once again into your heart. God, drop your word that blesses life upon my heart. I want you to bless me, Lord. I want you to minister to me, Lord. Jesus' name we pray. Father, you want to awake your children so you may empower them for the task ahead and for the reward ahead. Lord, I'm praying for those who are discouraged who have retired, that you will reach them back. I'm praying for those who want to give up, that they will not give up again. Amen. Father, take the burden away from them. Amen. Let them know that they are able. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm talking to you on the loss of desire to serve God and inherit heaven. The loss of desire to serve God and inherit heaven. What actually brings someone from sin to Christianity is to serve God and go to heaven. The psalmist said it in Psalm 73. Verse 25. Psalm 73 verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. Heaven was the goal of the psalmist. My heart is on you in heaven. My heart is on you in heaven. And on earth, I have nobody to serve but you. I have no one. that I desire to serve apart from you. So, I come to you on earth to serve you because I want to go to heaven. Now, you will repeat this. I came to God on earth to serve him. And to go to be with him in heaven. Say it again. And, and to be with him in heaven. But that's how we came. But I'm saying that desire has died. 
your mind is not actually on God now. The thoughts of heaven is not there again. Something has pulled your mind from God. Your mind has been pulled to something. Maybe money. Money has blocked between you and God. There is a cloud of money. A cloud of money. Maybe women has blocked you. A cloud of women has blocked you from God. Yet that desire is not there again. Maybe men, a cloud, as a cloud covers the sun, sometimes a whole day, it keeps the sun from shining. A cloud covers your heart, your life. The desire to make heaven, to go to heaven, is not there. It's not even, it's not strong to some of you. It's there, but it's very faint. As you see the sun, very faint because a cloud covered it. A mist. Or the moon by night. Something covered it. You're not thinking much of heaven. In fact, it is when somebody mentions it, it touches you briefly and, and goes away. Something happened. Maybe you have joined some group of people. By the way of life with those people, they are not people of heaven. They are not people that take God seriously. Who knows? They are in occult, witchcraft. So, God is cut off. But you came to God to serve him. That you may go to be with him in heaven. That was the beginning of it. That's what you had. So, you were very zealous. Very fervent. You were a joyful person. Committed. Part of your sleep went away because of God. Because of heaven. Your money bought many things that helped you because of God. You bought books. Check up yourself and see the number of books you are buying now. How much have you bought? Check your Bible. It could have been re replaced if your vision of God was still there. You would have ascended. You would have gone up. You would have increased Things are stagnant. Check and see. You complain of money you don't have. Is it because you want to buy something on God that you don't have? Forget that one you have not thinking it again. That's why we are speaking these things. A careful observation on the churches and the ministers, workers, and members show that there is a loss of vision of God and desire to go to heaven. There's a loss. It has dropped like the Naira. Naira has dropped. Just dropped everywhere in this country. The value of the Naira has dropped. Yes, in those days you could use ten Naira to buy something, but which ten? What can ten Naira give? Your Christian life was of what? Your voice was of what before the devil. But now, what has your voice to do with Satan? 
it doesn't feel the weight of your voice because you have dropped in power of Christianity. That's the problem. Isaiah was in this condition until the vision of God descended on him again. He started well, but he dropped until the Lord shot up again on him. This must be your prayer. In Isaiah chapter 1, when he began his prophecy with the children of Israel, he was an earnest man. See, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his honor. They ask his master's creep. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seat of evil doers. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have pro. Provoke the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. See how he was speaking with the visions of God and of heaven. But he dropped. He dropped with time. Look at it in chapter 6. From verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it, stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The paws of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. At this time, he remembered the Lord. At this time, he remembered the holiness of the Lord. He said, Then said I, woe is unto me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Can you see? He came to mingle with sinners and forgot God, the Holy God. His mind was no more on heaven. That's what I'm saying. 
You came into business and forgot God. Your mind is no more on heaven. Service was still going on, but the mind was not there. If the Lord did not quicken him, if the Lord did not come to him to cleanse him again, could Isaiah have made heaven? Because he confessed openly. Yeah. In verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. So how can the Lord take something that is undone? The cake is undone. You can't eat it. The food is undone. You can't eat it. I am undone. God cannot have me. So the way you are now, God cannot have you. Something has gone out of you. Your attention is no more with him. Then, the six, flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live call in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the, the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin passed. This is what is going to happen now. Your iniquities have to be taken away. Your sins have to be passed to bring you back to God, back to consciousness of heaven. Is then you can walk on and walk worthy of heaven. You see. Come, as for you, really. What reasons account for this loss of vision, loss of desire for heaven, for God. Number one, the Bible said you sold yourself. It is you. It's not even Satan. It is you. It's not other people. It is you that sold yourself. Yes. In the book of Isaiah chapter 52, I read from verse 1. To verse 6. Awake! Awake! Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus hear the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Can you see? You sold yourself. Now, what has captured you? 24 hours you are walking every day. Or 15 hours. The remaining few hours, nine hours is for sleep. No time for God. 
No waking up to look for God, to greet God, to bless God, to thank him. No. You need all the time. Someone said, I wish God had made the day more than 24 hours because 24 hours are not serving my purpose. So, you sold yourself to walk. You sold yourself to traveling about. That's why it's like that. Eventually, God, the vision of God disappeared. There was a kind of drug you were taking and accumulation of the drug in your blood kept that sickness away. But for long, you have not taken that drug. The sickness has come back in strength. For long, you are not seeking after God. So the, van the knowledge of God has vanished. You don't know him again. You're not strong before him again. To Samson, it was sin. Delilah had gotten right of him. Has cut off the hair of his hair. And when she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. He said, I will arise as at other times. I will shake myself. And he did those things. He didn't walk. Because the Holy Spirit has gone. You have given yourself to immorality. And now the Spirit is gone. You have given yourself to cheating. To oppressing people. Rough life. Stubbornness to the church of God. Now the Holy Spirit is no more. Now. You are a nominal Christian. You are falling to that level. If you don't do anything, soon you won't be coming to church again. It's gradual, step by step. But arise, shake yourself. And say, is it me like this? No, I'm going back. I will arise and go back to my father. I can be here. Not even having the foot of pigs. How can I? I was a teacher of the gospel. I taught people righteousness. How am I sitting here taking alcohol? Which time did alcohol come to me? I stop it now. I rise. You must do it to yourself. Yeah. I say you must do this to yourself. Yeah. Put off those things. Chase those things away. Hey, that lady don't come to my house again. You are part of the people that fooled me and God got away from my life. Don't come. What did I do to you? I said, don't talk that voice. I will ask God to deal with you there because you don't know what you did to him to carry somebody like me. I mean, take it, take it seriously. Shake yourself. Rise up and sit down. I said, I can't keep lying down. Died me. What happened? I fell. I told you the story of the boy, a brother, that in a room, in a parlor where his brother left, he was staying with, the, with his brother. And the, bro the, the brother's wife also has a girl, had a girl that was staying with them. So they were not in the house. So they just started talking, talking. Before you know it, Satan double-crossed them. He saw a game going on. I'm, I'm, I'm performing this game. Hey, how did it happen? So I have died. The soul that seen it shall die. I died. He rose up from there and put his hand. He has died. You know, just as you cry for somebody who has died, put his hands on his head and was crying on the way to church. And people say, What happened? C crying out. What happened? Did somebody die? He said, him, yes, yeah, somebody died. Who is he? It's myself. The people didn't understand. <laughs> the people don't, they didn't understand. How can somebody be crying that he died? But actually he died. 
That was the way he recovered himself. Telling you, you are sitting down, still lying down, a little more sleep, a little more slumber, so shall your poverty come as an armed man. You are one as a traveler. Because you did those things that you said, you sat down there. No confession. You have left originality to Ijebu. You are a Ijebu Christian. You are fake. You, are no, you have sin in your life and you have not confessed it. Fake. Ijebu. Made in Taiwan. Not made in uh, uh, or made in Germany or made in the, uh, London, made in America. No, this one is the state world. You have failed. Your sin is unconfessed. Your name is not in heaven. I will be sitting there. It's lazy man. Lazy woman. To pollute others now is the reason why you're in the church. That's what we're saying. You sold yourself. Go and deliver yourself. Don't wait for anything. You're waiting for God. Is it God that sent you there? Rise up. Go and stand before that devil and deal with him. Clear him out of your way. Satan, come on for all. I carry what? No break. What will I do to your head? I'm telling you, this is what you should say to Satan. Get out of my way. We, be, be angry with him. What he has done. So that you can come back to God. You can go to heaven again. Your, the desire of heaven will come to you. Yes. As for you, Children are your oppressors. Children. The people oppressing you are children. How are children? Your own case, why you backslide is a, is a laughable matter. Because it's like a woman. She's sitting down at home crying. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Then somebody came in and saw, what, what is troubling this woman? You came and saw a five-year-old boy. Mommy. <laughs> Mommy. Beating her. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Come. Are you have a problem? You made that five-year-old person is the one beating you, you're crying. You don't turn back and say, get out from this place. Come and lie down here. You're crying. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Children, that thing that kept you from God is too small and insignificant. That it should have kept you away. Too small. It stands for money. See, just less than a kilometer is transfer money that has kept you from coming to church. You can't trick it. And that's how you're gone. That's how you're going. You're going. You're going. Gone. Gone. Transfer money. You can't trick it. Does that amount to any reason? Do you not see people trekking this distance to go to farm, to go to market? I say to my people, children are their oppressors. Because if you consider the thing that has blocked you, 
the unknown entities. There are things that if you have, if you decide to stand up, they will fall. And you will make it to heaven. But to my people, children are their oppressors. Again, women are your rulers. In fact, is look at it in chapter 3 of Isaiah, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Women rule over them. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of their path. God, you will really help us in this matter. Your creation gave authority to men. You gave authority to Adam. Adam was first created. Then Eve. You put administration in the hands of Adam. Showing that men are the rulers of the society. When you were calling genealogies of a, of a man, you scarcely mention women. All is men. Adam gave birth to this, this, and many and other women. This gave birth to this, this, and they are all men. Women are silent, or scarcely mentioned. When you came to choose your disciples, all of them, I mean apostles, all of them were men. But today, the men are not there. It's women now that is ruling the church. So how will you live? Who purposely refuse God? Refuse to serve God? Let us ask questions in the church. Who are even the one asking questions? It's women. The men will sit down there and say nothing. They don't know that it is to their destruction. They don't know God is angry with them. Who is to answer prayer and the questions? The men are not ready to answer or make contributions. It's women. As for my people, women are their rulers. And so, they err because they have an erring spirit in them for having given the work to women and are not doing. Why don't you do and women help you? Why are you abandoning everything to the women? You don't know you're sinning. Let's ask questions. Let's now say, oh, if you have any question to ask, watch the men. They are not part of what you are saying. Are they in spirit? They are gone. The zeal of the Lord is not there. The desire of heaven is not there. Otherwise, they will be having in them the passion to say something to bless the people. Let me contribute in this area to bless the people. Why are they not doing they have lost their position before God in the church. Thank God for the women that are keeping things going. But that's not the perfect formula. It's men. Women should be in supporting. But men are not there. How can this men be strong and fervent? You get stronger with exercise. And you're not doing the exercise. You're not leading the people of God. You're not in leadership. And so God does not bother to water you. Because he that waters shall be watered himself. But since you're not watering, will they water you? Exactly. That is what you find in these churches. So God is 
the potency of God there is less. So man, that's the reason why you're not making progress. Angels are supposed to give you strength, but you're not using strength. So who will waste strength on you? You're not in leadership. You're not even ready. Who will waste strength on you? You come to the church. You sit as if you, they force you here as a drunkard. You are drunk and then they carry you in, in crutches and brought you here and sat you there. So you sit as a drunkard not participating in anything going on in the church. The Holy Spirit is looking for whom he will energize, whom he will empower, inspire. But you are not in that condition. It's only the women that are available. He that does not have, even the little he has shall be taken away. That's why you don't have strength. That's why you are meaningless. All the the ch churches, units, units, chapters, this. We need men. When Judah died, the disciples came and said, among the men that have followed with us from the baptism of John to the ascension of Jesus, let one be chosen to replace Judas. Did they mention women there? But suppose they never got the man as is happening in our day. They, to make it 12, they would have picked a woman. Maybe. So, men rise up. Otherwise, you will not make it. You are forgotten God. You are not zealous for the things of God. You are not ready for heaven. And as long as all weight is put on women, Instead of her being supporting, she's the main person and her bone is not strong for that. When Eve took the leadership, did they survive it? Why do you leave it to her? You want to be crushed. God is able to strengthen her if God sent her. But this zeal that has no meaning that many women are exercising, it will not work. That's what you understand. Why is the vision of God lost? The desire of heaven lost in the church is because the watchmen are seeking for gains. Personal gain. They're not, they don't have the word to teach. So nobody is getting from them. They themselves are blind. They don't have the vision. So they cannot communicate anything. Lie begets lie. In Isaiah, Isaiah 28, verse 7. But they also have ear through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priests and the prophet have ear through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They ear in vision. They stumble in judgment. The air in vision, the watchmen themselves. They cannot see. They can't see God. They're drunk. They can't see God because they are drunk. They can't have the vision of going to heaven. They're filled with their sin. They are filled with their sins and evil. The Bible says they are looking for gain for themselves. They are looking for gain. They want to gain. 
they want to gain. So, they are in ministry for money. They are preaching, teaching, doing what for money. And even their teaching is not correct. As a result, the people don't have the vision of heaven. My brethren, we have to pray. More prayer is required. Somebody was telling me, is it yesterday? Concerning what the Methodist church has done. They have declared themselves to be homosexuals, lesbianism. The pastor now, his wife can, is now a man. And that they have sent a new pastor to Methodist Church to be the bishop of the Methodist Church in Taraba State. And it's a white man who is a homosexual. It has come in here. I'm told of one that dressed himself, colored, put all painting, put all, all eyelashes, and said, I am Bishop this, this, I am a homosexual. And they are posting him to a church. It has come like that. Because the Bible says, in the end of time, people shall forget God. Then what are you, which, what is making you to forget God? My brethren, let's pray in earnest that these hidden homosexuals among us we do not know will not play zeal to the point they are chosen to become our uh, coordinators and overseers. We must pray earnestly. We must pray that witches and wizards don't become our unit leaders, our, our coordinators and overseers. Otherwise, they will make you not to know God. Light begets light. A man brings forth fruit after his kind, just like the tree. We must pray earnestly. And you pray that God will not allow anyone that is not sincere and true in righteousness to come and pastor you in the name of a denomination or a group or horemon. Because the days are evil. So Satan is doing all to block people's eyes from God. Other times can be persecution. Persecution can be raised up so strong that you will be told, don't go to church or I will kill you. What will you do about that? Yeah, let's, did it not even start when the Boko Haram announced, is it two years ago, that in a particular Sunday, nobody should go to church? Do you remember so, do you know that some people didn't go because they love their lives more than God? Can God be lower than any being that his people should not go to church on a particular day? That because that day God died or God went for a journey and cannot defend his people, cannot defend his name, I bring in these things up so that you should know why some people's vision is lost. Yeah. The hardened heart of some against God. Preach whatever you preach. <laughs> the heart is not here. 
say what you want to say, the heart is not hearing. Display hellfire on the screen and show them how people suffer in hell. The heart is not bothering. It's not perceiving. Look at it. In yes. Second Kings chapter 17 verse 14 to 18. Second Kings chapter 17 verse 14 rather to 18. 14 to 18. Notwithstanding they would not hear but hardened their hearts like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. They hardened their heart. Say it in whichever way they want to hear. These people's heart they have hardened. By this hardness of heart, will the Lord be there? You won't have the vision of God. For he said, I am meek and lowly in heart. But your own heart is hardened. It's hard heart. You will not have him. You will not have him. I am gentle, but you are rough. You can't have God. Your vision of heaven will be unclear. Verse 15. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the hidden that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they would not do like them. All the world, when you refuse the world, you reject the world, another spirit has taken over you. You will not be on the sight of God. If you don't know now, later your eyes shall open. Ah, so I didn't know that I left God. The Lord said, yes, I don't deal with hardened people. To these people do I have regard. Them that tremble at my word. Them that have contrite spirit and tremble at my word. Do you have it? So I left you full of arguments. Full of arguments. Believing you know more or you know already. So that's what the Lord said. And they followed vanity. They followed vanity. And became vain. You became empty. Nothing, God is not in you. I'm telling you, this rejection of any word of God, even one, is dangerous. It makes God incomplete in your life. One. How much two? How much more? Two. God has helped holiness revival movement to come up with complete doctrines of righteousness. By the grace of the knowledge of scripture and justification of those he has given revelation to we have it. Paul also said I have been given the knowledge of his word above 
all the apostles, there is abundant abundance of revelation given unto me. And Peter acknowledged it. Hey, are you going to argument with Paul and survive it? You will not survive it. Because the Lord is the one speaking through Paul. And the Lord has given to us a leader, an apostle, that he has invested with knowledge and understanding of eternal life. And he's teaching you these things and putting them in books. And you say, no, I don't believe. Oh, you will wander away. You will lack the knowledge of God. Because I am the way, I am the truth. If you reject truth, you have rejected me. You have rejected the way. Then you are not following well. I am the way, I am the truth. So, these account for it. Continue from, let's read verse 16. And they left all the commandments of the Lord, their God, and made them molten images, even two cows, and made a grove, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served there. And they caused their, their, their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and, the, and used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Now, you don't believe in divine protection. You are using charm now. You go to the malams, to the witch doctors, to see future for you, to see future for your children. That's what you're doing now. Because God is not enough. And yet you're coming here. How you can't know God. You can't join God and Satan. Can a body of water produce good water and bad water at the same time? Can the mango tree produce both mango and guava at the same time? How will you think to join God and Satan and be sitting here? You will never know God. If God is distributing his knowledge, he will escape you because you are evil. You downgrade him. You feel that he's not enough. It, come. If God will not protect you to give you additional life, and you go to Satan to protect you, you must die. Then where will you go to? Where will you go to? So, because they reject God in verse 18, therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his side. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Even this tribe of Judah. He came to do the something to them later. God will remove you from the position he gave you. God will remove you from even this holiness revival movement because you rejected him. You rejected knowledge. That's the word of God. Yes. You are responsible for your fall and not God. Now that your knowledge of God is shallow, you are responsible. Now that you are empty, you are responsible. Even as they do not want to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient. All those things you are doing now, you are a Christian. God gave you up. Dress the way you want. He gave you to do those things so that when you are going to hell, 
you should know that, yeah, you properly went off. He allowed you. Your conscience is not troubling you. He allowed you. What is the benefit of conscience troubling you? Is it not because you are to repent, but now you, you don't want him. You don't want him to interfere with you. Young girl, tell me, I, since I've been dressing that one, they call me an old woman. I, nobody came to marry me. Now I am going to dress the way people will see me and be lost in and come and marry me. And they will marry me and then we shall go to hell. That is what you mean now. Do you, do you have the best for yourself, oh God? The best time, oh God, for yourself? Oh, God has the best time for you. Do you have the best man for yourself? Oh, God has the best man for you. Judge yourself. God is not responsible. In Isaiah chapter 50. For your situation. See him asking you, a question here now. Yes. To tell you he is not responsible. In Isaiah 50 verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is he to whom I have sold you? Can you see? If you say I am responsible, can you give me the bill of divorce that I gave your mother? Did God ever say he doesn't want holiness revival movement again? Did God ever show that holiness revival movement has transgressed against me and as a result I will not serve anybody among them again. I will throw away even those who are served. Did God say so? Where is he? Where did he say so? Then why are you not in Christ again? Why did you withdraw? Why are you empty now? Is it because God sent you away? Is it because God has broken his covenant with holiness of our movement? And he's saying we're no more his own. He will not be with us anymore. That's why you cannot be saved. Or that is why even your salvation was removed from you. Oh, which creditor of mine that I have sold you and I'm not really able to redeem you. That you will say, I was the one who, who decided that you should not go to heaven. I was the one who decided that you should not be an active Christian. You should not follow me. Is there any creditor of mine that I could not settle? I settled with Satan for your salvation by paying the price required for it. I redeemed you from sin. I bought you back from sin and Satan. Bought you back from sin and Satan. By my life, I gave my life for it. I shed my blood for it. I will you not be in the backsliding and be saying that I am responsible. Which way? Which way? No. I'm not responsible. Behold, I am not responsible. Yeah. Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves. And for your transgressions is your mother put away. Your sin sold you away. Your transgressions made me that this made me that despite that I raised up this holiness movement as your mother, I didn't respect it to, to serve you in your sins since you're not interested. You're not. Holiness movement became powerless because 
you are more interested in sin than in salvation. Because you chose sin, you chose sin. That is it. I'm not responsible. You love it. Your understanding is dry. Your mind is no more in heaven. Heaven means nothing to you now. The ordinary 10,000 naira is more than heaven. Can carry you for immorality. More than heaven can carry you for immorality. It's your sin. That's what the Lord is saying. Some of you sold yourself to television. You must watch television from morning to evening. Your hand says has taken over God from you. Your eyes are always there like chicken. Chicken don't look up to the sky. They look down. That's chicken. They open the ground, open the ground and look down. You don't look to heaven anymore. Hanset has taken over. You look to Hanset. Whatever you are looking for, they say something happened in London. You must know it. Okay, you are going to follow the story and the story will take up to three months. You must be looking for it. The Bible says, set your eyes on things above. You set your eyes on telephone beneath. Answer. You sold yourself. God is not in you anymore. God is not in you anymore. Desire. The desire of God has failed. If you gather all these times, you give to Answer. Six hours in a day. And turn to God. And could even make two hours with him in a day, you would have met it. But rather, you seek to increase the number of hours. You are watching handset, television, handset on the road, television in the house, finish. Satan has finished and he's going to the next person. I'm telling you. Money, gain in life has removed you. Brother, return from your backsliding. Come again and set the vision of the Lord before you. In Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12 to 15. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12 to 15. Go and proclaim these words toward the north. And say, return, thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord. And I will not keep mine anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God. And has scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. And ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors. According to my heart, who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding? God is saying, you shall come back. Consider where you have fallen. The Lord says, you shall come back. Accept that you have backslidden. Don't because you came to this meeting think you have not backslidden. You have. The knowledge of God is no more there. The passion of God is no more there. The concern for heaven is no more there. It's no more there. Some things have taken over. The Lord says, I should tell you. He is at this time ready for your salvation and restoration. 
Not to doom you. Not to destroy you. No. He wants you to come back to the true world. He has prepared true, uh, the true world for you. To guide you to heaven. To guide you to servant. That's what God is saying unto you. That's what God is mentioning unto you. Come back to him. Return to the good old path and walk in it. That's number two. Return to the good old path and walk in it. The path of sacrifice. The path of commitment. The path of evangelism. The path of prayers. Long prayers. Going to the woods to pray. Separating yourself. Rising up early in the morning. Return to it. Devotional life. Return to it. Return to that fervency that you used to have. It shall then go well with you. The knowledge of God will come back to you. The righteousness of God will come back to you. The consciousness of heaven will come back to you. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, Jeremiah chapter 6, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. And also, I said watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Therefore, hear ye nations and know, O congregation, what is among them. The Lord says, come to the correct way. Leave that thing you are doing. Stop it. And come to the original path that can take you to heaven. Bear persecution. <laughs> Bear persecution. Yes. Bear persecution. Don't mind. Don't mind persecution. Don't be threatened by persecution and withdraw. You will miss the way. You will miss your God. In persecution, was not God there in the fire with the three Hebrews children? He will be with you in your persecution. Was not God there in the den of the lions with Daniel? He will be with you at the point of death. So what are you fearing now? Come to the old path. That's the good way. As you saw my people, as you saw I and my people walk through the Bible, follow in that same way, you'll find peace. You'll find happiness. You'll find heaven. And you'll find joy. But there are people who say, no, leave me alone. Oh, then we shall see how your life shall become. We shall be witnesses that the Lord told him, the Lord told her, and she refused. See what is happening now. We shall be witnesses. The voice of his watchman watching over you has spoken. Stop this thing you're doing. Don't go that way. Here is the way. Walk there in it. You say no. You will not hear the voice of the watchman. We shall see how your tomorrow will be. And we shall make reference. That, do you remember we said this to you? This is it. That's the word of God. Yes. Again. 
Do service with the love of God and not service only. Let the service you are rendering be with the love of God. Not just serve. Serve with the love of God. Not just serve God. Serve him with the love of God. With righteousness. With truth. With holiness. Not with lie. In Revelation. Chapter 2. Verse 1. To verse 5. Revelation chapter 2. Verse 1. The Bible says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, This thing said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not. And hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience. And for my name's sake hast labor and hast not fainted. Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember that, therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. These people are service people. Just like a pastor can still be on the throne. Saul was still on the throne. Laboring. Go for war. Did this. But the Lord said he had rejected him. Is this service? No. To obey is more than sacrifice. To hearken to God and to his commandment is more than the, the, the fats of rams. That's what the Lord is saying. See the efficient church here. See the works they have done. They have labor. They have fasted. They even know that some people are not correct. That's fine. But practical holy living is your problem. Practical holy living. Service you are doing. Evangelism you are doing. Practical holy living is lacking. Yes, giving you are doing, organizing program you are doing. Practical holy life you don't have. Preaching you are doing, teaching you are doing, writing books you are doing, but practical holy living. That's the first thing. First is first. Now abided faith, hope, and love, charity. But the greatest of this is charity. But you have left the greatest thing. You're busy doing other services. Praying you are doing. You're doing praying. Fasting you are doing. But practical holy living is lacking. That is where love is. If thou love me, keep my commandments. You're no more keeping the commandments. Anger, stubbornness, rudeness, I don't care, is your spirit. You have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works. Holiness is work. Work on yourself to be holy. Walk on yourself to do restitution. Walk on yourself. Preach to yourself. Pray a lot on yourself to achieve godliness. To add to yourself godliness. To do 
godliness of life, character, to recover the vision of God, to recover the knowledge of God, the love of God, and the vision of heaven. I will go to heaven. I will make it to heaven. My name should be written in heaven. Rejoice! Not that the demons are subject unto you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Recover your name there. Recover your name. Recover your name. Number four. Dissociate from evil company. They do evil and teach evil. They aim at the righteous and say, let's destroy him. Evil company. They see the zeal of the children of God and are angry. They see progress of the righteous and are angry and are planning evil against him, against her. Whoa! They know a righteous girl coming up. They want to control the righteous girl and pollute her. They look for a man that has no righteousness at all and convince this girl the Lord has shown that that is your husband. We who know the Lord have prayed and are convinced that that is your husband. Or else it is a young man. They want to destroy him. How can we arrest this man? Hey, brother, we have prayed and the Lord has revealed that that girl is your, is your wife. Because the girl will ruin his life. Will ruin his life. You are, you are in the company of evil doers in the church. Wicked women or wicked men. You won't prosper. God will destroy you. How will God show you himself? You are not worthy. Who are destroying these young men that are coming for him? That are dedicating themselves to him. In the book of Proverbs. Chapter 13. Verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13. Verse 20. Yes. The Bible says. He that walketh with wise men. Shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Repent from joining foolish people in the church whose life is wickedness, backbiters and gossipers. They have everything to say about the pastor. When they meet together, it's slander. Everything to say about every good man. Everything to say evil about every good man. Remove yourself from that company. Those who plan evil against the righteous, remove yourself. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. How will not your life be dry? How will not your understanding be darkened that walk in darkness? I'm telling you, loss of vision. You don't know God again. You don't know him again. Very unfortunate. In the dark, you may not recognize people, even when they are close. Because you can't see the face well. You see a sense of evil, a figure. You may not even see the figure. Hey, I remember in my youthful days, it rained. And I was sent to go and buy something in darkness after the rain. Now, as I was going, what, what, what is on the road now? 
What evil is on the road? See, no touch light in the village. I didn't carry, I didn't carry touch light. They didn't give me. So I made my way to that place, bought that thing, whatever it is. And as I was coming, you know, village road, the village road, very narrow like this. Except you see a person, you can't make provision. So as I was, I was running on that road, running to quickly reach house. I didn't know that somebody was coming in the opposite side until we hit ourselves. Boom! I, I turned aside. The man turned aside. With, I located my rope. I should run faster. I hit an evil man. Hey, hey, run! In darkness, I couldn't see. The person couldn't see. We, we came opposite. Bah! Move! Up to today, I don't know the person. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Up to today, I don't know him. That is how you will do God if you're in darkness. You will know. Only go with you to pass. <laughs> because he said he will judge you. Repent of darkness. Come out of it. And serve the Lord truly. Yes, yeah. set your heart on things above. Let your mind be on God and on heaven. Psalm 73. Psalm 73. Let your mind be on God and on heaven. Verse 24 and 25. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me up to glory, to heaven. Ah! That should be your desire as to follow God. You lost it, regain it. You lost it, regain it. To maintain the righteousness of God so that he will receive you to heaven. Once again, I came to serve God so that I will be with him in heaven. I came to serve God on earth so that I will be with him in heaven. Come back to that vision. Come back. Take all your time to pray that those things that carry the, their visions of vision of God, vision of heaven. The Lord destroy them. They should not be worthy. Man should not be worthy. Woman should not be worthy. Money should not be worthy. Handset, the telephone should not be worthy. Money should not be worthy. To carry you away from God and heaven. He said in verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee that I want to come and meet? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. That I desire to serve besides you. That I desire to please, not a husband, not a wife, not a friend, not a neighbor, not a relation, not the government. How will I even talk about Satan? Come back to this state, my brother, my sister. Locate back to your past. Otherwise, with the wind the wind that is blowing on the earth, people are forgetting God. They are forgetting Jesus. They are forgetting heaven. And all, they are forgetting the pure commandment of God to keep it. How long did you come to holiness movement that your zeal has finished? How long ago has holiness movement been established that the zeal you came with has finished. 
go before God for a renewed zeal, a renewed vision to serve him again and to hope for heaven. Let's rise up upon our feet. Open my eyes, O Lord, O my Father. Oh my Jesus, open down my heart. Oh my Jesus, Lord, I pray thee, Go and tell the Lord. Tell him like that. He must do something in your life. Otherwise, you have forgotten him. He must do something in your heart. Otherwise, the vision of going to heaven is lost. Your mind is not there. Other things have taken over. Thank you. Let your eyes open. Ask God to open your eyes to the vision of heaven, to the vision of God. The wise people are forgetting God. Recover Remember Jesus. Remember his invitation to heaven. Keep Jesus alive in your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus name we pray if there is somebody to serve you I am the one to serve you Lord If there is somebody to love you, I am the one to love you, Lord. Hey, Jesus, I love you, my Savior, Redeemer, my Father. If there is somebody to praise you, I am the one to praise you, Lord. If there is somebody to praise you, I am the one to praise you, Lord. Jesus. My Savior, my lover, Redeemer. If there is somebody to thank you, I am the one to thank you, Lord. If there is somebody to thank you, I am the one to thank my Lord. Worship Jesus, Jesus, my Savior, Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Son of God. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, my Savior. Thank you, Redeemer. Thank you. Forgive me, thank you. If there is somebody to honor, I am the one to honor you. If there is somebody to honor, you are the one I'll honor you. If there is somebody to worship, I am the one to worship you. If there is somebody to worship, I am the one to worship you. Jesus, the Son of God. Emmanuel, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, everlasting Father. I worship, I honor, I praise you, I thank the Lord, I bless you, hallelujah. If there is somebody to bless you, I am the one to bless my God. Hey, worship him. I love him. If there is somebody to love you, I am the one to love my Lord. Hey. If there is somebody to preach you, I am the one to preach, my Lord. If there is somebody to bless you, I am the one to bless you, Lord. Jesus, the Son of God. Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace, the Counselor, oh wonderful, I praise you Lord, I praise you Lord, I praise you Lord.
I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise my God. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I honor you. I honor you. I worship you. I worship you. Go ahead and pray and tell the Lord I am here to do it. I recover. I'm the one to do it. I'm going to do it now. I have recovered. Jesus, I'm going to do it now. You are now my figure, my focus. Heaven is my focus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.